Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Jenny. I'm from Jenny Card Designs. Thanks so much for joining me today. My YouTube channel contains content that is intended to share paper crafting tutorials and inspiration with all of you. I hope that you enjoy. In today's video, I've got a fun project to share with you along with a bunch of really neat tips and tricks. I'm gonna be using this Kathy Zilski Happy Days Stamp and Die Set. I picked this up from Simon Says Stamp a little while ago and I hadn't had a chance to use it. So I thought I'd make a fun, happy card using this stamp and die set. So when I opened up the dies, I noticed they have the little tabs where they're attached. So I'm going to show you my little quick tip on how I take these apart. I have a little pair of snips here and I like to use a baby wipe and I like to snip over top of the baby wipe so that when the little tiny pieces of metal fragments bounce, they catch right on that baby wipe right away. And I don't have to worry about finding little bits of metal in my feet later on or flying off and going somewhere I don't want it to. I go ahead and I just run around and I try to like put my hand over top of the area that I'm snipping just in case it bounces upwards. So I like to make sure that it, you know, it ricochets off my hand and bounces downwards into the baby wipe and then it'll catch there and I won't have to worry about it. I'm going to get all of these dies cut out and then I'll use the baby wipe and roll it up and toss it away. So once that's done, I'm gonna put all the dies back into the little envelope here, and I'm only gonna keep out the die that I want to use for today's project, which is the Love You die. So I've got a couple of pieces of cardstock here. I've got some Bristol Smooth cardstock and a card base. I have um, a piece of Bristol for my sentiment and a piece of Bristol for my ink blended panel. Now I'm going to be using some Distress Oxide ink and I have these little ink pad holders that hold my Distress Oxide ink and my blending brushes. And then I've got a silicone mat that I'm just gonna ink blend over top. So I'm gonna put my cardstock down and I'm just gonna ink going back and forth with my Distress Oxide ink. And I wanna create a gradient effect of color from Peacock Feathers into Villainous Potion. My little ink pad holder holds my ink in place while I ink blend away and I can ink up my tools and have a little spot to set everything down while I switch in between colors. So I go ahead and do that. I I blend back and forth in between those two colors until I get the transition of color that I'm happy with. And then I thought, well, I've got a little bit more space. Let's create a little bit more interest to this panel with some more colors. So I grabbed some Distress Oxide Picked Raspberry. I blended that into the Villainous Potion and went back and forth a little bit. And then finally I decided one more color, let's add in Cracked Pistachio. And I added that to the other end where the Peacock Feathers is. And then I just went back and forth and blended those two colors together. And I'm really happy with the result of this beautiful inky panel. I'm gonna use my heat tool to help dry this paper because I'm using Bristol Smooth cardstock for one, which has a little bit of a coating so the ink kind of sits on top. And then I'm using Distress Oxide inks, which is a pigment-based ink. So with a combination of both of those, it takes a little bit more time for that ink to dry into the paper. So I'll use my heat tool to help that process along so I can continue with my card making project. Okay, so I'll just set that aside and I'll continue to work on my sentiment. So I have that little scrap of Bristol Smooth cardstock. I'm using my Misty stamping tool and I have the Love You stamp from the Kathy Zilski Happy Days stamp set. I have that loaded up onto the door of my Misty. I'll ink up my stamp with VersaFine Onyx Black ink and I'll close the door and press. I like using VersaFine Onyx Black ink because you get such a beautiful impression every time. VersaFine doesn't dry as quickly because it's an oil-based ink, so this gives me time to heat emboss. I want to use some of this black charcoal embossing powder and it's got like a really cool rainbow sparkle to it, but it's black. So I'm going to pour this over a coffee filter and dump all of my embossing powder over my desk, which defeats the purpose of the coffee filter. Um, but you can try not to do that. <laughs> it's just real life crafting. I'm a normal human being. I make a mess. I'm not perfect. I just, I'm really good at editing videos and cutting all that stuff out. But I just left that in for you because, you know, I had to laugh myself. So I'm going to dump all that extra embossing powder back in. I've got my heat tool here. I'm going to heat set that embossing powder until it is smooth and melted. 
and we've got a gorgeous bold and chunky love you greeting I really love the way this greeting is so I'm going to use those coordinating dies and I'm going to tape the die over top of the word I'm going to run it through my Gemini junior die cutting machine and I'll get this sentiment cut out I'm not going to make this card too complicated I just wanted that sentiment to stand off the front of that card and now I also wanted to share with you this really cool tool this is the Tim Holtz deckle edge trimmer I love this thing it creates just the coolest like torn edge on your cardstock and I really love junk journals I really love making those types of things and I thought this would be a perfect addition to my junk journals and then I thought well why don't I try it with my card making and sure enough I'm I cut up this panel and was in love with the way it turned out it's just got this cool rippled ripped edge effect and I'm gonna put that on the front of my card base with some craft foam in behind it I've got some liquid glue and I have this little glue holder that holds the cap of my glue inside of the glue holder and then I just unscrew my lid and pull off the glue tube and then my glue is at the ready so it's kind of neat so I'm gonna put some liquid glue on the back of this panel and I'm gonna cover it with some craft foam and trim off the excess and then I'll cover the back of that craft foam with some more liquid glue and I'm gonna adhere this down to my panel I just love the way that looks I wanted a thicker white border but I didn't want to lose too much of that color because I didn't have much pink or cracked pistachio so I just went ahead with a, a little quarter inch border all the way around and I'm gonna glue everything down I'm gonna pop up my sentiment with little scraps of that foam and use some liquid glue pop everything down and I'll put my misty on top to give it a little bit of pressure to hold everything together while that glue dries I went to go get some embellishments while this glue dried and I grabbed my Marvie jewel picker and this thing I mean I love it I love the feel of it in my hand but it stopped working it got all gunked up with glue and I'm gonna show you how to fix it so what I've done is peeled up all of that tacky edge on both sides and the Marvie jewel picker these little metal tips come right off so uh, I'm gonna leave it attached but I just wanted to show you that it does come off and I've got a scented candle which makes my room smell beautiful and disclaimer this could be dangerous it could be hot um, little kids shouldn't do this you shouldn't do this without adult supervision okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my candle burn for a little bit and then some of that wax that sort of melts around the flame that's what I'm gonna dip the edge of my jewel picker in I'm just gonna dip it a little bit and then I'm gonna pull it out I'm gonna make sure that it doesn't touch the flame I'm just putting it in some of that hot wax you could even go as far as uh, letting your candle burn for a little bit and then just blow out the flame and then you can just dip in your little metal tip and then pull it out and then blow on it because you want it to cool off a little bit and you kind of want to layer up the wax so that you get a few layers of wax on the edge of this tip and then boom you have a brand new never dying Marvie jewel picker every time you need some new wax all you have to do is melt your candle a little bit stick in the tip and you're you're good as new and that makes me really excited because I haven't used my Marvie jewel picker in quite some time I have two sets of embellishment boxes and I have one Marvie jewel picker in each but they both stopped working so now I have a resolution to be able to forever use my Marvie jewel pickers so that was kind of fun all right, so I'm going to grab some Gina K Designs frozen embellishments. These are cute little iridescent sparkly things and I'm gonna pop them around my card and I'll uh, use my liquid glue and my new and improved Marvie jewel picker. Pick up my little gems, drop some glue on my cardstock and put my gem on top and that Marvie jewel picker is as good as new, as good as it is the day it came out of the box. And this card project is complete. I had so much fun today this idea for the jewel picker repair came to me at a very last second and I was so excited to share this with all of you because I know many of you have the same jewel picker and when we spend money and invest in our crafty tools we don't really want to throw them away so i had been hanging on to these for a bit and then this idea sparked and I'm really excited to be able to use it over and over again here's a close-up look at our finished card
so that is it for today's video thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend it here with me i appreciate the support as always coming up on screen are a couple of videos i think you may enjoy including a playlist to my chop it up series which is full of inspiration and ideas to chopping up your cardstock have yourself a lovely day and i will see you in the next one bye